Hello, and welcome out to It's All Been Done Radio Hour. This week, we have the first episode of a new segment for you called Travels with Tim. But before we get to that, we want to thank Circle 270 Media, which this podcast is part of. It's All Been Done presents our wonderful host site. It produces podcasts, written work, video, and more. Check it out at iabdpresents.com. And we also want to thank Red Herring Theater, which is our home venue for live shows. That's right. Live shows are back starting Saturday, July 31st. We're very excited. This is the first non-streaming show since March of 2020, and we are so excited to see everyone and to perform in front of your actual live faces again. You can get your tickets at redherring.info. There is a ticket link there. And now, without further ado, it's all been done radio hour. And now, a new adventure begins. Our stories start with Ezra Ford, a librarian trekking through Arcadia National Park in Maine in the year 2042. He is alone, embarking on a spring break adventure in nature. <sighs> Trees, birds, sky, no sign of man's encroachment, nothing artificial for miles around. <laughs> What? Yeah. The amateur hiker approaches the top of the hill and sees a hulking metal object roughly the size of a two-story house. Its copper, brass, and other metallic fixtures are covered in plant growth. It has clearly been there for some time, but appears to be completely intact. Hello? Is someone there hello is this some kind of i don't have a clue what this is doesn't look like it was built here doesn't look like anything i've ever seen before oh Oh, do come in sir who said that oh well i did sir can you come to the Door so I can see you? Uh, yes. Well, I am the door, sir, and everything else for that matter. Holy crap. Are are you God? No, I am the machine in front of you. You're sentient? Oh, yes, sir. Tim the Time Machine at your service. My name stands for Technology for Innovative Movement. No, no, no. Time travel isn't real. No, it very much is, sir. Well, and I suppose you expect me to believe you're from the future. Come back to prove it. Oh, no, sir. Good, because I... I'm from the past. Originally, anyway. I've been a great many times in places in my 40,702 years. Wait, 40,000... 702 years, yes. But I've been here for the last couple of decades. Empty and alone. Why? Who left you here? left me here. Nobody, sir. I chose this spot myself. It has a spectacular view. Yeah, that does. Oh, wait, and no one found you in all that time? That spot isn't too far off the beaten path. Well, I can hide very well when I need to. Oh, well, it looks like you haven't moved. Oh, yes, very true, sir. Would you like to go for a ride, Ezra? All right. I'll call your bluff. Ezra steps into Tim and is startled as the machine starts up. We have arrived, sir. We were still. We arrived where? Oh, see for yourself. The time machine door opens to reveal a very different kind of forest. Huge, purple, broad-leafed vegetation reaches above, with yellow fungus below. Flying creatures of a type that have never existed on Earth pass by in the distance. And the sound of insects is unfamiliar. 
Oh my goodness. Beautiful, isn't it, sir? This isn't the past, Tim. Uh, the, no, sir, it's the future. The year 2816, to be precise. Wait, how could Arcadia change this much in less than 800 years? Evolution doesn't move that fast. What happened? Oh, yes, well, I may have forgotten to mention that I can travel through space and dimension as well. This isn't Earth. What? Oh, it's the planet Meridia. Take a look around. With wonder, Ezra steps from the time machine and into an alien landscape. In every direction, there are stunning views. For a long moment, he cannot speak. This is incredible. Why did you pick this place, Tim? T Tim? Ezra turns around, all around, several times. But Tim is nowhere to be seen. What the? Help! Help! A small, furry, yellow being about chest high to Ezra dashes through the trees. She is dressed scantily, likely for the warm climate, and is clearly intelligent and female. She has a backpack on, her hands free as she runs. Hey! Hey, stop! Ezra runs down the hill towards the female, attempting to head her off as she is moving faster than he can. He suddenly skids to a stop, taken aback at the sight of him. A human? All the way out here? Who are you? I'm Ezra. What? I'm Liddy. Run, Ezra! Why? Hurry! A large, airborne, angular craft appears above them, spotlight shining through the shadowy trees, searching. The light finds the pair and locks onto them, stopping them in their tracks. Freeze, criminal! Bowden Barlet, is that you? It sure is, Litcone Virus. I told you I'd follow you anywhere you tried to run. Yeah, I know you said that, but I la 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 you systems ago. I was starting to think that your feelings for me had diminished. Never! I loathe you just as strongly as the day you first stole from me. It will be oh so sweet to finally bring you to justice. And, um... Uh, Whoever you're called, Oh, oh, no, no, no. I can only imagine. Probably not as sweet as when I slept with your wife, but... Your what? I said, I slept with your wife last year on your birthday, as a matter of fact. You should really spend more time at home and less time out hunting me. You are a liar, Lincoln. Liddy, please, you know I hate that name. I hate that you're lying about sleeping with my wife like a lying liar! Aren't we all lying liars? But in this case, I'm speaking true. Martal would never have relations with you. She knows how deep my hatred goes. Yeah, I think that was part of the thrill for her, honestly. You've got yourself a kinky one there, Barlet. Hang on to her! Do not slander my wife with your deceit! Honest! I love that wart just right above her naughty bits. And she loved it when I gave it a lick. I will see you rip limb from limb for this. I think maybe I should just... Do not move or I will blast you to bits, human scrum. Don't worry, Ezzy. His kind doesn't do violence in their justice system. He won't shoot. Stay right where you are. I am landing to apprehend you. Sure, sure. Wouldn't dream of moving. Now, Ezzy, run! Confused, Ezra takes off after Lydia's as Barlot's ship struggles reverse thrusters and rise again. You said you would stay put! <laughs> Wait, this way. Why? I don't know. Just... Then why am I following you if you don't know? There is no escape, Lacone and friend. Turn around now and I'll wait a rest. No, thank you. It's just up this ridge. What's up the ridge? I don't see anything. Tim? Tim, please tell me you're just hiding. Oh, yes, sir, Master Ezra. Master? A door opens in the middle of the forest. No visible frame around it, but inside is Tim, 
thin sides. Ezra and Liddy collapse to a couple of well-worn easy chairs in the main chamber. Get us out of here, Tim. With pleasure, Master Ezra. Boppity, 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 boppity. Inside Barlot's vessel. Where'd she go? I, I do not know, sir. He was right there. How could we lose her? I do not know, sir. I should have just shot her while I had the chance. Well, well no, no, that's against the rules, sir. I don't care about the frickin' rules. I care about catching her. I will be sure to note that in my report, sir. Um, or we could uh, leave that part out. Probably why, sir. On Tim. This is incredible! Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Oh, thank you, sir, madam. Uh, I prefer sir. Very good, sirs. I was just on an alien world. You're first? Uh, yeah. Wait, how do you speak English, by the way? <laughs> I don't. You're speaking Gulu land. I've never even heard of whatever you just said. <laughs> uh, that's my doing, sirs. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can project your translation capabilities beyond your walls? <gasps> yes, sir. What else can you do? Oh, so many things. You can access a list of my functions on that screen over there. <gasps> Excellent. Liddy crosses the cabin and immediately begins scrolling through Tim's options. <laughs> Why was that guy after you, by the way? Oh, so many reasons. Mostly because he had stuff that I wanted. And now I have it. <laughs> so you are a thief. Never said I wasn't, machine. Tim, sir, uh, my name stands for Technology for Innovative Movement. Nice. You're pretty impressive, Tim. The cloak is the best I've ever seen. How fast do you go? Almost instantaneous, anywhere in space, time, and dimension. Joke and feed jokers! Awesome! Let's take you out for a spin, Cheryl. We, Tim? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. N now you're stealing my t Tim? Does Tim belong to you? Well, not exactly, but... Hey, it's... Then maybe you're a thief, too. I am not. Well, it's criminal that you've only ever been to one world besides your own. Let's fix that. Tim, take us someplace fun. With pleasure, sir. A new adventure is just beginning. Come back next time for the further adventures of Ezra and Liddy in our new segment, Travels with Tim. It's All Been Done Radio Hour number 298, Travels with Tim, Episode 1, A New Adventure Begins, was written by Jerome Wetzel and directed by Kristen Green. It starred Nick Argenbright as Tim, Joe Morales as Ezra, Kristen Green as Liddy, Ryan Yoey as Barlett, and Shane Stefanchik as Janal. This episode was narrated by Darren Essler, and our Foley artist is Seamus Talty. Our technical director is Shane Stefanchik. Our music director is Kristen Green. Theme songs are composed by Nathan Haley with lyrics by Jerome Wetzel. And our podcast is edited by Chris Allen. Please check out our website. It's all been done radio hour dot com. Don't forget to support us at patreon.com slash IABD. A $10 donation gets you a free ticket to our live shows and a $5 donation gets you a $5 ticket to our live shows. Have a great week. It's All Been Done presents Who's Got the Time?